In boxing, an instant can change everything. Years of drive, dedication, and sacrifice at long last rewarded, or callously tossed aside. For years, Jermaine Taylor enjoyed a charmed rise from precocious contender to bona fide champion. He pulled it off, and the long reign of Bernard Hopkins is over. Meanwhile, Kelly Pavlik's emergence out of the Midwestern Rust Belt was fortified by a hardened attitude and an even harder right hand. This is stoppage time. Kelly Pavlik has a huge knockout victory. Last September, their undefeated paths finally crossed. The ensuing clash turned into what many experts considered 2007's fight of the year. Taylor suddenly gets Pavlik in big trouble, and now Pavlik goes down. Jermaine was one shot away from knocking Kelly out. I'm good. Shame on Jermaine for, for missing. Like any classic fight, the tables turn, and Taylor, once the predator, became the prey. And that right oh, hand hurt Taylor. Taylor is done. Left hook. Down goes oh. the man. When it was over, there was a new middleweight king. In an instant, everything had changed. Now, less than five months after that brutal battle, Kelly Pavlik and Jermaine Taylor meet again. This is Jermaine Taylor's attempt at immediate redemption. Jermaine Taylor gets knocked out again by Kelly Pavlik. Now you have a career in shambles. He gonna come to fight, I'm coming to fight. And that's what I'm looking for. You know, I ain't never ran from a fight, never will. This is the story of a fallen champion and his resilient quest for boxing greatness. I'm proving to myself that I still got it in there, that I'm still hungry, that I still want this. And a new sensation seeking to reaffirm his dominance. I'll come get it. He's going to be very, very upset and brokenhearted when he goes home on the 17th. This is the countdown to Pavlik Taylor 2. Kelly Pavlik came into the room the day before his fight with uh, Jermaine Taylor and told us that Taylor had faster hands, that he, Pavlik, might be hurt in the fight, that he wouldn't be surprised if at some point he was down and tasted the canvas, but that he promised us he would be able to get back up and keep going. Ultimately, he would catch Jermaine Taylor with a double jab, and when he did, Taylor would turn his head toward the ropes and he'd be able to hit him with a straight right hand, and all those things happened just exactly the way Pavlik laid them out. It was one of the most anticipated matchups in recent middleweight history. The division's reigning undefeated king versus a 31-0 highly touted underdog. Many observers thought it had the potential to be the fight of the year. It didn't disappoint. Their trainers are going to ask them to box. Both guys want to fight. Midway through the second round, Taylor took control. Taylor suddenly gets Pavlik in big trouble. Kelly Pavlik getting raked by hard right hands and left hand. And now Pavlik goes down. The funny thing about that knockdown is even though Taylor hurt him legitimately, Pavlik wasn't badly hurt until he dropped his hands to show that he wasn't really hurt uncharacteristic of Kelly. You know, he stuck his chin out, you know, as to taunt Jermaine. I thought it was over. You know, I just, you know, it was so early in the fight. I think there's like a minute 48, something like that to go. And uh, one more good shot could have really did it. And, you know, shame on Jermaine for, for missing. A minute and a half to go, a half a round still to go. And Taylor has Pavlik in big trouble. And a chance to finish him right here. I'm, I'm so surprised that Pavlik could come back from that. It's still early. That's why he can come back. But he's getting hit. The second round when Kelly Pavlik was seriously hurt, and I was not too excited because I could see Jermaine expending a lot of energy. And actually, at one point, I saw Jermaine get hit at the end of the round, and I saw him have to hold on. 
I threw a lot of unnecessary punches. Um, I should have went more to the body. Should have threw a lot more uppercuts. And, you know, um, I could have did a lot of things different, but I didn't. Taylor has punched himself out a little bit here, and he needs a blow. What an assault, and what a survival. You know, you caught me with a good punch behind the ear, and, um, you know, an equilibrium shot, and I don't care who you are, you get hit there, your legs go. You know, I was still a little shaky, but I held on. Mind-wise, clear-wise, he was perfectly fine. I know Kelly, he's honest in the corner. He's told me when he's been hurt. He's all right. He's I'm good. By the end of that minute, you know, I asked him, and he said he was fine, and I told him, I said, you know, we got to jump on this kid. You know, as soon as I came out in that third round, I just started throwing the punches, and, you know, I felt like every jab I threw, I landed. Um, right hands were starting to find their mark. And here comes Pavlik with straight right hands again. He backs Taylor into the corner. I knew right there that, you know, from the third round on, that it was my fight. Tremendous combination. Pavlik trying to find the damaging right hand. Straight Taylor with lefts and right. As the bout wore on, Taylor wore down, and a re-energized Pavlik established the upper hand. In the sixth round, I kind of started seeing a little fade in, in him, and that's when I kind of started knowing right there that it was a matter of time before I land one of the big right hands. By the seventh, Taylor's reign as middleweight king was all but over. Kelly told me after the fight, you know, we were in the middle of the ring, and he goes, man, I knew I had him when I seen that twitch in his, in his chest. Sure enough, I mean, if you watch the tape, you'll see Jermaine get hit and, like, a little quiver, and it's just like a muscle reaction went right down his chest. The way he jolted back into the corner, and I knew right then and there that he was hurt bad. And that right hand hurt Taylor. Taylor is done. Left hook. Drops Taylor's head up. Uppercut has Taylor in big trouble. Down goes to oh, And Steve Kroger is going to stop the fight. There's a brand new middleweight champion. He's from Youngstown, Ohio. Uh, Kelly, at that moment when you were down, give us your thoughts. Give us your thought process. You really want to know what I thought? Yeah. Said, Shit, this is going to be a long night. <laughs> <laughs> if Jermaine Taylor can somehow put all thoughts of the seventh round out of his mind, and go into this fight with legitimate, clean confidence and self-belief, he's still got the physical goods to beat Kelly Pavlik and win the fight. But I'm extremely doubtful that you can do that. You know, if he can do that, all power to him. But I think the odds are against that kind of response. I'm gonna say to Kelly, hey man, that book you gave me, I learned a lot. I think I needed it. Now, I'm hungry again, you know? I'm ready to fight. I can't wait to get back in the ring. I can't wait. Four and a half months have passed since Jermaine Taylor's devastating loss to Kelly Pavlik. The night still haunts him. Every time I think about it, it just kills me because I could have did a lot more. And I'm not the person to sit up here and make excuses about who fault it was and who didn't do this and who didn't do that. I, I blame everything on me. I think we all kind of took Pepper a little lightly. We should have did a better uh, job in preparing Jermaine for this grueling fight. I just feel like I didn't get enough sparring. Um, hit heavy bag a lot more. You know, I should have did a lot more than what I did. With the looming rematch comes Taylor's chance for redemption. This time, without legendary trainer, Emmanuel Stewart. When Taylor and Stewart teamed up in 2006, Expectations were high. Now, four fights and a knockout loss later, Stewart will not be returning to his corner. For whatever reason, in this situation, Emmanuel's brilliant teaching skills did not produce significant technical improvement for the fighter. You know, I, I respect Manny. I respect, you know, all the champions he's had, and I, I respect him to the fullest. I don't know. It, it just wasn't working out. You know, and, um, so we had to let him go. You go back through those fights, you'll find several discussions between rounds where Emmanuel is showing his frustration. Don't give a fuck whether you land or not, just let him go. Don't worry about you, he's gonna be a shitty fight, but you gotta let punches go. During the actual fight, the two of them never meshed, and you could always see Manny was always telling him one thing, Jermaine was doing something else. I think Jermaine is the type of guy, he's what we call, he's an instinct fighter. Some guys you can speak to, and you can only have to speak 15 seconds, and that's it. With Jermaine, he would say, yes, sir, yes, sir, I got you. Now let the footwork be moving in like a cat, you understand? 
that he would start off remembering it, and once he got into the battle again, he, was inst- he did things instinctively. He didn't remember. After the Pavlik loss, Taylor replaced Stewart with longtime advisor Ozell Nelson, the man who first taught him the sport. Me and Ozell, we've been there forever. You know, he knows me like nobody else knows me. I understand him, he understands me. And so uh, he can go in that corner, and we ain't got to say two words to each other, but I know what's going on, you know what I mean? Their relationship spans 16 years, back to when a 13-year-old Taylor first entered Nelson's gym. Jermaine came to Ozell. Jermaine wasn't a boxer. Ozell molded him into a boxer. He was with him his entire amateur career. If you go back and look, I'm the one who built Jermaine. You know, as a 13-year-old, I got him to the Olympic. So Jermaine know that I'm a good trainer. I don't think it's necessarily a give-up call to split from Emmanuel and go back to work with somebody whom he knows and loves and appreciates on a gut level more than anybody else in the world. The fight coming up between Jermaine and Kelly is a big challenge, and maybe equal as much to Ozell Nelson as it is to Jermaine. Maybe Ozell Nelson is just the right guy to give Jermaine the comfort level he needs to go back to where he was. Right now, our back is up against the wall, and we both got to perform. I said, we both got to do this. The entire city of Youngstown has been knocked for a loop. I'm not going to say that Youngstown is on the canvas, but the Rust Belt is fighting for its life to a certain degree. They don't have the same industrial base that once kept all of these Americans feeling safe and fed and vital to the society. And for them to see someone like Kelly succeed is tremendously exciting. It's a lift. And he's so visibly and identifiably one of them. An entire city's population have invested their hopes and dreams in this one guy, and he came through for them in a huge and dramatic way. Following his victory over Taylor, Pavlik was met at the Ohio border and ushered back into Youngstown by a convoy of state troopers. In the weeks that followed, a citywide celebration ensued. Pavlik soon went from local hero to regional icon, garnering the attention of fans and peers alike. If you're a professional athlete in Ohio, and you haven't met Kelly Pavlik yet, why? His experiences showed him to be sort of the king of Ohio sports. You know, he throws out the first ball at a Cleveland Indians game, and his presence in the locker room creates such a distraction that the manager of the Indians, Eric Wedge, actually has to sort of restore order and say, guys, okay, I understand it's a thrill to meet Kelly, but you've got a game to play. Clearly, Pavlik's personality is going to resonate with a a working-class population. People identify with that guy because it feels somehow more democratic. You know, he's not on top because he was born so much different than the rest of us. He's on top because he worked so hard. In Pavlik's case, it's a little deceiving because he's, in fact, a tremendous athlete who was born different than the rest of us. It is amazing because I would have never guessed back then, not him. I had other kids that had come in that had a lot, a lot more natural ability than him. He was the only kid on our first team he was on it that I didn't even give an outfit to. <laughs> I bypassed him and gave it to everybody else, and he's the world champion. Despite the ascent from challenger to champion, Pavlik's no frills training regimen remains the same. Hey, Kelly. As he's done before each of his 32 pro bouts, Pavlik stays with his parents in his childhood home, just minutes from the house he shares with his daughter, Sydney and girlfriend, Samantha. <laughs> Good thing is about training here, everything's so close, and, and uh, including my house, I can go back, see my kids, and then, you know, dinner, my, my diet, get the right, right food and meet the healthy food. No, one more bite. And just the everyday thing over there, just to get some good night's sleep and make sure he's uh, going to bed early and, you know, and the baby's not keeping him up. But just, just eating good, sleeping good, and things like that. I mean, it's a lot of pressure. It, it really is being one single guy. I mean, pretty much by yourself, going in there and carrying Youngstown on your back. But um, 
at the same time, sticking around here close to the family and friends, that's, you know, where I want to be. You can give me silk pajamas and bed sheets and blankets, you know, that's, that's not comfortable to me. It really ain't, you know, for the time being, I'm happy and comfortable around my family. 900 miles from Youngstown is Jermaine Taylor's hometown of Little Rock, Arkansas. With Taylor secluded in training, his wife Erica takes care of their three daughters, including their newborn baby, Layla. <laughs> oh, lots of love. Ooh, she's got lots of love. <laughs> Layla was born December 10th, and Jermaine left for training camp on December 27th. He spent as much time as he could with her while he was here, because he knew that he had to leave. So he was holding her, kissing her, staring at her, and, you know, feeding her. He did all the things that he did because he knew he was leaving. It's hard, and, and, and I'll, I'll tell you the truth about it. It's, it's hard to wish on nobody. But the only thing about it is it's hard, but it's, it's fair because I get, to, I get to live a nice lifestyle. I get to live in a nice house. You know, I get to drive nice cars. I get to have my, my kids' college degrees paid for already. And But we keep in touch. Um, we communicate. We're able to see each other through the internet. Oh, this is all day long, man. <laughs> We're able to talk to him and see him. We can do everything but touch him, you know? Bye-bye, Tara. <laughs> But a new trainer and a new baby aren't the only changes for Taylor. Last year, he prepared for the Padlick fight as the undefeated middleweight champ. But recent lackluster performances had left many in Taylor's hometown questioning his desire. Hold on, hold on. Champ just walked in the building. Champ's here. Champ gonna party, so if I can win the fight without getting the black eye, I'll get knocked right, out right. myself, that's how I'm gonna win it. I don't care if Manny's in the corner with him or not. He's got to get that killer instinct back, or else, guess what? Kelly, on the 29th, it's over. But since the hard-fought Pavlik defeat, Little Rock sentiments have shifted. What we want to do is open up the, the phone lines right now, okay? I'm a Jermaine Taylor fan. I think he can go out there and win again. Jermaine Taylor got to go out there and crush this man. Jermaine Taylor's a true champion. Hey, man, appreciate your phone call. I thank you, all right? Now, here's the deal. Uh, Champ has got his love back. You know, there, there were certain people that were wishing for his downfall, and now because Champ gave a lot of his heart, showed a lot of his skill, now his fan base has gotten even bigger, uh, and, we're, and we're all back in his corner again. He was surprised, and he thought, well, here I am, I lost. This is my first loss in my professional career. I was getting criticized before the fight, and now I go out and lose, so people are really going to be on to me. But it was actually just the opposite. I think people saw that he was kind of down and th that he needed them to prop him back up again. That's exactly what, what his fans did. And so he won back, even in the loss, he won back a lot of his fans. It's weird. I, I see the people in the street, they say, it, you know, that, that that's the best fight that I ever fought, that they ever seen me fight. I was like, what? <laughs> I'm surprised that at my lowest point, everybody stepped up. and showed me love, because I needed it. You know, and I, I think it helped me out a lot. Taylor has trained in several locations over his 29 fight career, always accompanied by an entourage of close friends and rarely escaping criticism for a lack of focus. But for this bout, re-centered and reunited with the trainer who taught him the sport, he secluded himself in a new camp a short drive from the Vegas Strip and a long way from anything familiar. There's an edge to Jermaine that hasn't been there before, and I think it's an edge that only losing, and only losing by knockout, can kind of get a fighter. He always had been kind of a kid, you know, like to, like to be by himself. But now it's kind of scary, you know. He don't even want his friends around. He don't, he changed his phone number when he came into county. I think about the fight. I think about the last round. You know, I think about when I had him hurt. You know, um, how come I couldn't finish him? You know, I, I just think about, is this the fight that's going to make my career? All you have to know to know how brutal and definitive that knockout was, was that Steve Smoger waves his arms and says knockout without even a 10 count, and nobody complains. That's all you need to know. That's a violent, definitive knockout. It's precisely because of that that I'm very surprised that Jermaine Taylor 
insists on going directly to this rematch without another fight or any other experience in between. Yeah, a lot of people came to me and said that, that, I, that I should take a tune-up fight, that I should do this. I'm not doing that. You know, I want to fight the man that beat me. I mean, that's what boxing is missing. Let's go get him again. Let's see if he can do it again. I don't know how he's going to respond mentally after that fight. You know, another hook or a right hand lands on a chin. We'll see how he adapts to it and, you know, what his body, if his body can handle it. It's looking good. Everything's still the same. His time is not gone. His speed is still there from where we left it at. The same thing's going to happen. This time, it's just going to be a little quicker. Oh, um, so we're going past to the seven. It's going, it's going to start early. He's going, Jermaine going back on ESPN after this fight. The February 16th rematch features one significant change from the first bout. The fight will be at a catch weight of 166 pounds, rather than the previous middleweight limit of 160. And though the weight change was Taylor's stipulation, Team Pavlik appears unfazed. I, I don't understand the, the logic behind that. I think it's going to benefit me more. You know, I'm taller he is. I got a bigger frame than he does. You know, he, he just puts on a lot of weight in between training, as where I don't. I think it's a big advantage to Kelly. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, Jermaine's going to be stronger too, obviously. He's going to have a little bit more energy and everything, but so is Kelly, and I just think Kelly's the better man at, at 66 or 60. So I, I think we have a huge advantage. Kelly called me, like, early and wanted to start camp early, wanted to start running early. You know, I don't have a one-hit wonder. I got, the, I got the real deal, and I really believe mentally and physically and, and, and emotionally everything. I, I think the 16th people's going to see a much better Kelly Pavlik. I have an undefeated record. I want to keep that zero. So there's, there's still so much more out there to accomplish. I, there's a lot more I got to prove before my career is over with. Right now, me wanting it's even more than it, than it was before. To lose at this point would be disastrous. He loves that zero on his record. And uh, trust me, it's going to take a hell of a man to take it away from him. And it's not going to happen the 16th. <laughs> Jermaine just got to be ready to fight. I mean, we're ready for whatever Jermaine brings. If he boxes us, we'll be fine. If he wants to stand and try to punch with us, bad move, but we'll be prepared for that, too. Left hook drops Taylor's head up. Uppercut has Taylor in big trouble. Down goes Jermaine. Oh. We took the best Jermaine Taylor, and we knocked him out viciously. We're going to knock Jermaine Taylor out again. Oh. Kelly Pavlik is a classic knockout puncher. Oh, he put to sleep with a right hand. Despite a body and a persona that doesn't say search and destroy, everything about him in the ring is search and destroy. You know, I'm not going to beat this kid. I'm fighting for respect just to say that the first fight didn't mean nothing. You know, I got you back. And I got you back a lot worse than what you got me. We talked last time before the fight, and look what happened. But I'm going to get it. This is the kind of fight that you want to go to the mountaintops and scream, everybody, watch this fight. Come on, come on. Both guys are going in there to search for a knockout again. I don't see how it could be any less exciting, maybe more so. Pavlik Taylor.